Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to use small canvases to make a big impact. And I'm gonna show you how to make this Christmas decor, but of course you could use the techniques to make whatever sort of theme project you want. I'll be using eight by 10 stretch canvases. And the reason I wanted to use stretch canvases is because they're lightweight. So I can hang these up on the wall with poster putty. I don't have to put any holes in the wall, which is great for a seasonal artwork. Or if you are a renter and you can't put holes in the wall, you could use whatever theme you want. You could add more canvases, make a larger grid, cover your walls with little canvases. And it just makes a really fun, quirky, big impact. And I'm gonna show you some techniques that will help you save a little time when you are doing multiple canvases. If you wanted to work in a series and maybe not make something that goes together and you want to frame your work, I would recommend going with canvas panels just because they're less expensive and they're also a lot cheaper to frame. The supplies I'm using today come from our sponsor, Conda. They're a new store that I found on Amazon recently and they have fantastic deals on art supplies. And this week they're going to be offering their lowest prices of 2018 in honor of Black Friday. So if you need to stop up, stock up for Christmas, you want to stock up for your own arts and crafts, maybe you're a teacher and you want to get some supplies really inexpensively or you're looking for some gift giving they have wonderful brush sets they have kids art sets and all the supplies we're going to be using today so I definitely recommend checking them out if you're looking for some great deals on some of those art supplies that you use a lot your consumables so without further ado let's go to the table and I'll show you how to create this work of art First step in this decor piece is planning. So I sat down on my comfy couch with a Conda sketchbook and started to map out my idea for the canvases. I knew I wanted to put four together, so I just drew four rectangles. And then within the rectangles, I started to draw um, some of the poinsettia flowers that I wanted to have. And I also indicated where I wanted some stenciling. I knew I wanted some stars, maybe some flourishes, and I definitely wanted some text. I wanted to make sure I could unify all of my canvases canvases together. Next, I went down to my craft room and I arranged my canvases in that same grid format. I had some leftover chalk paint, so I decided to use that up since I knew it would match other decor projects that I'd made in the past and just kind of spoon a glop of each color onto the canvas. And then I used some of these brushes from the Conda value pack to spread my paint around. I added texture by sponging and then by taking another one of the brushes from the value pack and dragging on some really pale green paint. I love the texture that I got and because I painted all four canvases together, they all match. I chose this large stencil to begin with because I really like the text and the flourishes and it gives me that vintage vibe that I wanted my paintings to have. I'm using the stencil pouncers that came in the value pack of foam brushes from Conda and they worked really well. As a bonus, I was able to wash them and get a little more use out of them. So even though these brushes are designed to be disposable, you can use them dozens of times for stenciling because it's not too rough on the brushes. After stenciling all my brown paint on, I went ahead and distressed the edges with that same brown paint and a hog bristle brush. Then I used a star stencil and gold paint to fill in the design and add that star pattern everywhere to give me a nice sparkly holiday look. Now I'm taking chalk and sketching on the poinsettias from my sketchbook sketch. I'm using chalk because if there's any um, lines remaining after I'm done painting, I can simply wipe them away with a wet Q-tip. So there's a little tip that I learned back in my toll painting days. And I'll actually be sharing some toll painting techniques as we go along in the painting section. And uh, you could find free coloring pages online if you don't know how to draw a poinsettia or you don't want to draw it freehand to make things a little easier for you. I'm using the set of Taclon brushes here. They're a white bristle and a synthetic brush and they work really well for brush stroke techniques. So what I basically did was I painted the leaf with a dark green acrylic paint and then I got some light mix of a yellow ochre, white and um, green on the edge of my brush and just kind of traced the edge of the leaf. And that just gives you a really nice three-dimensional look to your leaves. Sometimes if the leaves aren't too big, you can do it all in one stroke. All you do is you load up your brush half with the dark color, half with your light color. And if you don't want to mix it, you can get colors pre-mixed. And then just um, paint each side of the leaf on its own. For bigger leaves, you will have to go in and uh, fill in a little bit or use a larger brush. I proceeded to do all of the green leaves first because they were in behind the red petals and I knew that if I had a, um, a messy green leaf when I overlap it with a petal it'll be nice and crisp. So just do all the, uh, the leaves in behind first. 
Now for the red petals, I began by taking a nice crimson red, look for your nice crisp bright reds, and painted that uh, in the center of each petal, and then I went around the edge with a slightly lighter color that I made by adding a little bit of um, a warmer scarlet, yellow, and white. And that just gave me a little bit of um, of uh, I guess a little bit more brightness at the edge. And then for a final highlight, especially on the petals that were closer, I used a little bit of white to that light mix and rimmed them a little bit. If it goes a little pink, which it might with the scarlet, you can add a little bit more yellow to your white like I did here, and it just warms it up and makes it look a little bit more uh, poinsettia, Christmas poinsettia looking. Um, I don't really know how to describe that. It looks a little more like a poinsettia leaf, I guess. Um, which I, I guess they're all leaves, the red and the green are all leaves, and the flowers are technically those little uh, yellow bits in the middle, but I don't know, they look like petals to me because they're red, I guess. So basically, you just want to have the edges a little bit lighter, so as they overlap the darker petals underneath, they give a little bit more three-dimensional look to them, and it just looks a little bit more polished. I also try to put a little bit of a streak down the center for a vein. We'll add some more details later, but I try to do as much as I can in the first layer because um, it just it saves you time, and I find often with acrylics, if you can blend it right off the bat, it's so much nicer to paint with than if you try to to um, kind of layer up after the fact. After that layer was dry, I started to add some details and I put it on an easel to do this. And this is one of the Conda easels, which is super quick and easy to set up. And I would highly recommend this to anybody that teaches sip and paint classes because it folds down really compactly and it sets up in seconds. So it would save you a lot of time preparing for a class. Or if you like to travel to take classes and you paint with acrylics or oils, it's a really nice option and it's very affordable. So what I began doing was mixing some red and green together to make a nice neutral dark and I added some veins and I also used that color to dab in some shadows where the petals overlap. So right next to the highlight edge of the upper petal on the lower petal. And you can just take a clean brush and spread it out because you have so many brushes in the set. It's easy to grab a clean one and use that. For any petals that I felt needed a little extra pop of highlight, I went ahead with a tiny liner brush and just uh, rimmed the edges and dragged in a few veins from the outside. Even though you don't necessarily see white veins, you might see the reflections of the um, creases on the petals and that's where the white came from. I used a bright cadmium yellow to dab in the little flowers in the center, which are technically, I guess, the petals, maybe, and the other stuff is leaves. I don't really know my botany very well, uh, but I added that to the center and also little smidgens of yellow on the leaves just to make them pop. And then after that dried, I could put them on my living room wall. To stick these to the wall, I simply applied a pea-sized ball of poster putty to each corner of each canvas and then firmly pressed them in place. I hope you give this tutorial a try and I want to thank you so much for watching today. I also want to thank our sponsor, Conda. I'll link to all the products I used in the video description below, as well as a link to their store. They're having their best sale of 2018 this week in honor of Black Friday, so you will not find lower prices any other time. So you can stock up on your canvases, brushes, and kids art kits. They've got some fantastic gifts for the kiddos, so make sure you check that out if you have some artsy young ones in your life. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.